start off with Kenya, and uh, we know that one of the biggest uh, points of contention thus far have been uh, with regards to the passing of various bills. Financial management bill has been one of the most important because it's going to have a significant impact on lending rates, and of course this is going to impact banks. That's correct. Um, there was actually a proposed amendment to the finance bill uh, that seeks to cap bank lending rates at 400 basis points above the central bank rate and also to put a floor to bank deposit rates at 70% uh, of the central bank rate. Now this has raised a considerable concern because the consensus is that this would lead to credit rationing in the economy and it would actually be the opposite of what it originally intended, which is to uh, increase the extension of credit in the, in the economy. So there has been considerable concern regarding this, but increasingly it's looking like the government is in negotiations with yeah. uh, members of parliament to see if a compromise can be struck to incentivize banks to lower their interest rates rather than regulate the rates per se. Okay, so when you take a look at the, the county government bill as well, we know that Parliament passed this, but it seems uh, that there's still a few issues uh, that could come through. We know that perhaps this year is a politically sensitive year. How do you foresee this playing out? So do you think it's going to be a deterrent for, for potential investors? I think uh, only if things get to levels whereby we are facing a constitutional impasse. But what I can see happening is uh, a situation very similar to the finance bill whereby for example, the county government's bill, the president declined to assent it, and it's been sent back to parliament. And I think certain amendments will be made to ensure that functions such as security, which are supposed to remain the preserve of the national government, uh, are properly worded in the county government's bill. And you'll see a situation whereby there's a bit of back and forth and horse trading until a compromise situations are reached. Only if things get to crisis levels or a constitutional standoff will we see a, uh, yeah. it act as a detriment to investors. So let's also just touch on uh, the overall GDP number. You're forecasting around 5.5% growth uh, for 2012. We know that consensus probably ri lies around the 6% handle. And this really has to do with how the ag agricultural sector is going to play out because we could actually see very light rains this year. This could have a spillover effect into inflation as well. How do you foresee these uh, important factors uh, playing out with regards to growth in Kenya? Once again, uh, Kenya remains a factor-driven economy. Agriculture is 22% uh, of the country's GDP. And uh, initially, we were forecasting 6% uh, GDP growth for 2012. And the consensus actually is uh, fairly significantly below that. It's uh, below 5% based of most, based on mo most people we've been discussing with. However, now that uh, it turns out that the long rains, March to May, are going to be slightly difficult to predict than forecasted, uh, the basic outlook is that the rains will be depressed in most part of the countries. However, in the most uh, economically active parts and most agriculturally productive parts of the country, we still expect near normal rainfall, which, which seems to indicate that uh, the GDP growth will still continue to be robust. However, we just think that just to be uh, more prudent, we've lowered our focus to 5.5%. Uh, GDP growth, which is still uh, way above the consensus, but just looking at um, past economic trends for the Kenyan economy, we think that's quite achievable. Okay, let's also just touch on the overall shilling and how that's also going to have an impact uh, going forward, because this actually could impact the interest rate environment and inflation. We know that the uh, finance minister has actually come out and said that he is looking for a much more stable local currency. They're talking about 82 to the US dollar. Is this achievable? I think it is achievable. I think what we are, I'm really looking at closely now is uh, the $600 million um, uh, foreign currency denominated loan by a syndicate of foreign banks. Uh, the details regarding those loans are expected to be announced publicly any time now. And what I'm anticipating is that that could see significant additional strength, strengthening of the shilling to levels of uh, 80 shillings to the dollar and beyond. Uh, once that announcement ca comes in, and I think the funds will be disbursed in the next month or two, we expect to, to see uh, the proper reaction to the shilling and uh, it could turn around to be a situation whereby yeah. exporters are actually hurting if the shilling strengthens too much. All right, so let's touch on Uganda. We've got very high inflation there. We also saw an interest rate cut not too long ago. Uh, there are very uh, big concerns as to where to from here on the monetary policy front. What is your sense with regards to Uganda and do you think that we'll start to see a stabilization within the inflation uh, scenario? Well, with regards to Uganda, our outlook for 2012 remains the same. We expect that economic growth will slow down uh, a little to an extent, 
especially because of uh, the manufacturing sector slowdown as a result of the electricity hikes. We do see inflation continuing to come down, uh, probably at a, at a quicker rate than, than occurred in the last month. Uh, and I understand Uganda has received fairly good rainfall. And uh, again, food is 54% of their inflation basket, much higher than Kenya. So we're seeing a more stable inflation situation in Uganda from, the food, from a perspective of food. And although electricity prices will, will be jacked up uh, following the lifting of subsidies, we still expect that the food impact will overwhelm yeah. the impact of higher power costs. What's also very encouraging is when you look at uh, the uh, oil uh, scenario that's playing out because we saw government signing production uh, sharing agreements with uh, various uh, companies such as Tullo Oil. Um, how's this going to contribute to the overall outlook for Uganda's growth? It won't contribute uh, significantly in the near term. We are looking at uh, oil production starting, significant oil production starting in the 2016-2017 timeframe with possibility of a small scale oil production starting slightly earlier than that. So I think the real impact and the outlook for the Ugandan economy is really from a long term perspective. We are talking about three, four years from now. However, just that sense of optimism and the increased investment required to set up the infrastructure required for an oil industry should be positive for the Ugandan economy as yeah. a whole. Okay, let's move over to Rwanda. And while Uganda has uh, relatively high inflation, we've got Rwanda in inflation sitting at around 7.8% uh, year on year in January. Things looking better. And we know that the economy is set to grow around 7% for this year. So uh, a positive uh, story all round, it seems. Yes, well, the situation with Rwanda is uh, slightly similar to Uganda's, although for different reasons. We still expect slower GDP growth in uh, Rwanda this year, uh, in the range of 7.5% compared to the 8.3% achieved last year. The reason for this is uh, largely dependent on donor flows. Uh, as you might be aware, the Rwandese economy is largely dependent on uh, donor aid. And uh, depending on how the situation in the Eurozone plays out, we could see a situation whereby there is a lower reduced FDI leading to lower uh, GDP growth in Rwanda this year. Yeah. However, we still, explain, we still expect inflation and uh, the central bank rate, what they call the key repo rate, to remain in the single digits.